for your heart till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church this Sunday morning in July. It's been a fun weekend. I hope you all have enjoyed this continuing staycation series. Uh, we've so far been booking and beaching and camping. Um, we are really thankful for our creative staff who have continued to provide activities for us to remain engaged. And you've been engaged by sending us pictures, and we're so thankful for all the ways that we've been able to see you and your families through those pictures. So, uh, yes, it's been a blessing that we've all had to become quite adaptable during this time. Uh, we're glad that you're here in worship for uh, this morning's worship. For those that might be visiting Grace for the first time, I'd like to introduce ourselves. I'm Janet Salber, and I'm one of the pastors here. And I'm Drew Colby, and I'm one of the pastors here too. Happy Music Week to one and all, uh, and welcome to Grace if it's your first time here. Each week of this staycation series, we've been in the book of Galatians, but we's, we've also had fun ways to have a staycation together. And each week we've had funny clothes to wear, but there's no real funny clothes for Music Week. Uh, each week so far, I've lost the costume contest, so, but I made a plan. I decided that the, way, the one way I could win this week on Music Week is if I played a musical instrument that Janet can't play. So I brought my didgeridoo. And I think if I can play this, then that means I win this week. Let's see. Uh-oh. What do you think? 
<laughs> Do so I win? I think that the Grace Congregation really wants to see you win. <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> Definitely the gift of music. They do not want to hear me singing. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard you sing. You're good. <laughs> we, uh, we do welcome you, and we're glad that you're here, and we hope that this series has been a little bit of fun for you. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, now's a good time to share this on Facebook or start a watch party so that your friends can worship with you. Uh, if, uh, and we want to make sure that you also fill out the Connect card uh, during worship. So whether you're on the website or on Facebook, uh, look nearby and you'll find the link to use the connect card so that we can learn your name, pray for you, you can share your prayer concerns and any other feedback that you have for us. Uh, so again, welcome and happy music week. Yes, so it is music week. Uh, Frederick Beekner wrote uh, that he thought that musicians worked with notes in the same way that a talk follows a tick in time, right? So we're kind of it's kind of amazing how a musical note can interrupt the silence, even just one note. Or we might hear the rush of cymbals or a didgeridoo <laughs> uh, that just creates this, this music and changes the atmosphere and changes time. Our lives will also create music. When I was a teenager, I worked in a gift shop and we had this... Uh, we sold some unique coffee mugs, and so when you put those coffee mugs up on the shelf, they would make a clink as they touched the other mugs, and we could always listen to that sound and, and reflect on it. Think about driving down a gravel road and hearing the crunch and how that almost creates music itself. So every so often, music will draw us into an eternal time and space and draw us into the fullness of the presence of God. And I pray that this week, this music week, uh, will be that for you. Let us join our hearts in prayer this morning. Most gracious and loving God, we enter into your presence, opening our hearts and minds to worship you. You are the one who creates and redeems us. Make holiness happen in us anew through all the changes and challenges and adjustments of this season, this season of pandemic and this season of becoming more aware of our need for standing up and against injustice. Just as you sent your son to arrive in our neighborhood, send us into our families, our neighborhoods, and workplaces to support and relieve suffering and to offer ourselves for others, following in the way of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues now uh, with a hymn sing in honor of the national holiday. We invite you to sing with us.
sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as a rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, Our worship continues now with the reading of Scripture. We are staycationing in the book of Galatians this summer. This is, uh, we're kind of taking our time and taking it kind of chapter by chapter. So today, our reading from Galatians comes from the fifth chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the Apostle Paul has continued to lay the groundwork to encourage the Galatian church to deeper faithfulness. And this morning, he points out the ways in which the Holy Spirit matures our faith. 
Let us pray. We call upon you, O Holy Spirit, that the words that are spoken this morning through a human body might become words that you use to ever increase love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, and self-control amongst us. Breathe into our lives anew. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So like many of you, perhaps, our gardens have needed water in these last few weeks. It's been pretty dry, and I have found myself double-handed carrying water, watering cans up and down my driveway and throughout my yard to, so that I can water some of the bushes and plants that my hose can't reach. And along the way, I'm noticing some new plants that are emerging things that I never planted. And I'm not talking about weeds. Yes, there's plenty of those too. But this week, I noticed some morning glories. They were traveling along the ground and weaving themselves into the woods. Beautiful new blooms. When I think about the fruit of the Spirit, as the Apostle Paul describes in this passage, that is how I understand the fruit of the Spirit. Those moments of, of love and joy, peace and patience, self-control, those moments of, of the fullness of presence that seem to emerge without any effort on our part. The Spirit is the cultivator and surprises us when we see someone who seems to exude the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of peace amongst turmoil, the fruit of self-control in the midst of unleashed hatred, or the fruit of patience at the side of a child's desk. Take a moment. Who is bearing the fruit of the Spirit for you right now? This scripture is timely for the American churches who have celebrated freedom this weekend. The Apostle Paul reminded the Galatian church of their call to freedom. Wait a minute, did, did you hear that? Their call to freedom, that's what the text says. You are called to freedom. A call is a clear purpose for our lives that is given by God. You see, the Galatians had been mishandling their freedom, exploiting the body of Christ, taking advantage of one another, acting as Paul names in the flesh. The Greek word is sarx, S-A-R-X, sarx. Sarx connotes using human temperaments against one another being caught up in desires that harm rather than serve another. And you heard the long list we read, the acts of the flesh, immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. The very act of naming the way the freedom the Christians have been taking advantage of one another, of using the flesh against one another, is itself confession. And sometimes it is so much easier to name what something is not. It's hard to define the Holy Spirit, yes, but it is easy to name that the Spirit is not amongst these things of the flesh. 
Now, be clear here. The Apostle Paul is not condemning the body. The body is, is created by God, and it's a Affirmed as good. The body is essential for the church. But flesh? Flesh is about taking on human natures that limit a fullness of life, that push others down, that prevent us from growing in relationship with God and others. Any sin or any woundedness that keeps us from wholeness. And we are most vulnerable to acting in the flesh when we are going through times of challenge and change. Jealousy, strife, quarrels, they happen during change, and they are harmful to the body of Christ. When the Word became flesh and lived amongst us, it meant that that God took on those very limitations of humankind, experienced the same suffering and passions. Jesus got hungry and thirsty, and maybe even hangry. You know what that is. But the fullness of his passion was revealed in his willingness to invite us into his love by removing all the barriers between ourselves and God by lifting us up that in Christ we live and dwell and have our being in a God who has experienced our suffering so that we can be free to love, free in the sense of loving our neighbors as ourselves, the one commandment that fulfills the law. The law is the law of love as demonstrated by Christ, the fullness of the fruits of the Spirit acting in the life of Christ. Paul's teaching for the church about the nature of freedom still matters very much today. A freedom given for love, a freedom given for serving one another, now, the Apostle Paul is not saying that we shouldn't get angry or disagree with anyone, but he is saying if we become angry or disagree with a brother or sister, do not let it lead us into sin. Gary Chapman is the author of Five Love Languages. He's a, a, it's a Christian self-help book some of you may have read. And he describes in this book what he calls the five love languages, five ways that we can express our love, maybe even five preferences for the way that we receive love. And the top five ways of offering love are first, words of affirmation and encouragement. Second is quality time planning for both work and play together, planning for intentional conversations together. Giving gifts is the third, providing the things that help one another. Acts of service is a love language. It means making a cup of tea or a meal or helping one another with chores. And physical touch is the fifth love language. Now, this is touch that is appropriate, touch that expresses care and not harm. Now, these love languages help with marriages, help with friendships, and maybe even especially help with parenting. But Jesus was the originator of these love languages to express God's love for others. These love languages might even help us understand how to care for the body of Christ. These love languages can be encouraging to those around us, facilitating further growth in faith. So here's the thing. Holiness happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we get our flesh out of the way, 
so that God can move into our bodies. Humor, human effort is not the way of salvation. Christ is the way of salvation. And the fruit of the Spirit comes through the power of God's love. When the fruit of Spirit emerge in our lives, it is like finding a bloom where we didn't plant the seed. Our work did nothing to get it there. It simply emerged in response to all the ways God's grace moves in and through our lives. Living in freedom for God's sake means that we take seriously loving our neighbor, that we not use our freedom to disparage another. To know that Christ accepts and claims, raises us all up, uses us all in the body in our church. Early in my ministry, one Sunday morning, while I was still learning how to lead worship, I was leading worship, and a man stood up in the midst of the whole congregation and confessed his need for prayer. He confessed that he was struggling with matters of the flesh. He confessed that he was struggling with serious drug addiction. This man was big and strong, and he looked like he could take on the world. And there he stood, crying out for help. Now, there was silence the whole time that he was talking. And I slowly began to move toward him out of the chancel and into the congregation. Imagine this scene. The whole body of Christ stood up, circled around him, held hands, touched shoulders, and we stopped right then and there and prayed for his healing and wholeness, for relief from his struggle with the flesh. Did you hear that? The entire congregation stood with this man. Yes, there were resources, and there were professionals who became helpful to him. But I want to tell you, I want to share with you how holiness happened. It was about a year later, and it was after worship one day, and we were having a meal in our fellowship hall. And there was a child, a young child, about a year old, a, a daughter of a young family in our congregation. And this man was sitting down at a table nearby, this little child. And I watched him as he leaned over and wiped the crumbs ever so gently off this child's face. He helped wipe this little one's hands clean. A man who had spent many a dark night in dangerous black back alleys was sitting down in a church struggling with the flesh. And I saw him look in this child's eyes with love and concern. He became part of the body of Christ. The Spirit was moving, and fruit was emerging in his life. And that, my friends, is how holiness happens. And if we watch carefully enough, we might see it emerging in all kinds of places that we never expected. Thanks be to God. These fruits of the Spirit, this love and joy and peace and patience, you know, we all want these fruits. But because of our human nature, there is nothing that we can work to do to accomplish them, to make fruit happen in our lives. It is God's Spirit moving in our hearts and in our minds through which the Spirit emerges, bringing us to these fruits. 
and we need to bear fruit for another. Perhaps we hope that one day we could see such fruit in our own lives, but perhaps what's even more important is to see that fruit emerging in the lives of others and knowing that it takes us all to bear the full fruit of Christ's love and grace in our world. And so we invite you during this time uh, to take some time with God. If there are struggles of the flesh that you want to offer up, confess, to pray about, we invite you to do that. And if there are friends or family members through which you are seeing fruit emerge, take this time to give thanks for that fruit emerging in their lives. May this time be used for you to gather in the fullness of God's loving presence. We also invite you during this time to make your offering, and you can do that through the Connect With Us form, an offering that is an act of worship, that we can turn to God, trust fully in His grace, and know that the body of Christ has been redeemed in and through our Lord and Savior. Time of prayer, having been 
offered again this good news of the work of the Spirit through Jesus Christ. We pray on behalf of the church and the world. As I lead our prayer, I'll name a prayer on our behalf, and I'll invite you to respond. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you're invited to respond to hear our prayer. So together, as one body of Christ, let us pray for the church and the world. Almighty God, as your people gathered even in this way, we turn our hearts to you by the power of your spirit to pray for the church and for the world. We do pray for the church, for all who confess your name, that we may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and all its nations. Guide the people of this nation and of all other nations in the ways of justice and peace. Help us to honor one another and to serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Those we encounter daily, especially in this season, we pray for essential workers on whom we depend, on all first responders and those that work to keep us going in a difficult time. We pray for all of our neighbors and especially the people in the immediate neighborhood of this congregation. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And hear the prayers of this church for Emmett and Lynn and Elaine, for Renee and Liz, Ethan, Bonnie, Karen, Terry and all who mourn, for Brooke, for Mimi, for Pops, for Jamie, for Victoria's father, for Rue, for Jarlene's son, for Debbie, for Larry, Sue, Marcia, William, and Kieran, for Allison, for those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and for all of their caregivers. We pray also in thanks and also asking for your care of a newborn baby in our church family, Elijah James. To all of these and to us, give courage and hope in our troubles. Bring them and us the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom the Spirit has borne such good fruit on whom we depend and to whom we can always turn. Amen. We conclude our time of prayer by praying with the words Jesus teaches us, and since it's music week, we're going to offer a sung version of that prayer. The way this works is I'll offer each line of the prayer, and you'll get to sing it right back. So I'll sing a line, and then you sing that same line right back. But let us, in this way, prayer, pray the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Ah. 
our Father. from the time Save us from the time of trial of trial and deliver us, and deliver us from, evil. from evil for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever, forever, and ever. Our Father. We invite you to join in the singing of our closing hymn, which you may recognize as a fun uh, and, and joyous piece of music for this music week. Let us sing with joy. Cheers. 
We are so glad that you were able to join us in worship today, and thank you, Pastor Janet, for that good word. I think that uh, in part of the uh, difficulty of this season, I have felt my own struggle in the flesh uh, and, uh, and needed the reminder that the Spirit is ready with gifts, uh, uh, for especially at a time when uh, there's a lot of strife and difficulty and disagreement and everything. Um, so thank you for bringing that word today. Uh, if it was your first Sunday with us, we especially want to welcome you, and uh, we're glad that you found your way to Grace. Hope you fill out a Connect card so that we can be in touch with you. Uh, and we hope that you'll be able to stay engaged this week. Uh, we've got lots of ways to do that, one of which is morning prayer, which over the summer we're offering on Monday mornings and Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. So you can log on to our Facebook page or our website to join in morning prayer this week. And our children's ministry is leading online Vacation Bible School, so please uh, make sure that you register your children and your neighbor's children. Uh, the last day for registration is tomorrow. Uh, that Vacation Bible School will happen uh, July 20th through the 24th. We also want to make sure that, uh, you know, we are having Bible study every Wednesday morning. Uh, this season, we're also doing a, a book club. We started this with Book Week last week. Uh, on the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. If you weren't able to join us last Wednesday, but you'd like to this Wednesday, that's great. You're welcome. Uh, we actually had over 60 people come, so uh, it's a big club. We invite you to subscribe to our weekly emails to get the link on Tuesday evenings. That's when we'll send out the link so that you can be a part of both Bible study in the morning on Wednesday and the book club on Wednesday night. And it's music week, so please pray for our children's uh, choir camp this week. They will be celebrating music all week long. And for social media, the hashtag is hashtag Grace Music Live or Grace Staycation. And so we hope we'll see and hear some of what you create this week. And now receive this benediction. Go forth and celebrate the freedom that we have been given to love and serve one another. Go in the knowledge that Christ has accomplished and is accomplishing our salvation. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, let holiness happen. Amen, amen. and amen.